In this video, I will try to explain why neural networks are so successful in machine learning and artificial intelligence applications and why they are all around these days with the buzzword deep learning. Let's start with an example. Have you ever wondered if you are using, for example, Facebook? What happens when you post the photo of a friend? Imagine you have a friend as sympathetic as Morgan Freeman. Sometimes you post a photo and then, by some sort of magic, Facebook asks you, do you want to tag Morgan Freeman? Obviously, it happens with your friends sometimes. And most importantly, this can happen even if Facebook doesn't have this particular photo of Morgan Freeman. It is enough that they have in their database some photos of him. To understand why this should impress you, let us give a rough comparison between a computer and the human brain. If we take a computer, and a human and we want to compare them in two tasks the first task is add in five two three five six seven seven two nine seven say eight seven six seven and the second task is recognizing a friend on a photo so you should know that for a computer this is an easy task for a human this is an easy task but recognizing a face is a hard task for a computer and doing very long calculations is a very hard task for humans. And to be precise, I will add a quickly here. So of course, you can add the 5,235,677 to the, the other number, but mm, I don't think you will do it as quickly as a computer. While you are very fast in recognizing a friend on a photo. And when I say that recognizing people on photos is hard for computers, I mean, especially when they don't have that photo on their databases. Because computers are only good at going quickly through, for example, things that were initially recorded in the computer memory. So if they already have a photo, they will just compare it to the photos they have and only give a response when it's the exact photo. But if you ask them to compare a photo they don't have to similar photos they have, they would be very slow on this. And the paradigm that made computers able to do this for photos they've not seen before can, with some simplifications, be explained as doing a long series of fast computations. Do we really know how computers can do this task using the other task? There is a joke that illustrates this based on the famous philosophical joke of why the chicken crossed the road. If you are not familiar with this joke, it says that in front of a situation of chicken crossing roads, many celebrities will have different answers. So for instance, Einstein would say something like, whether the chicken crossed the road or the road crossed the chicken is relative. Then you have Marx who would say that the chicken crossed the road to escape the bourgeois middle class struggle. To which Martin Luther King would reply, I have a dream that one day chickens would be free to cross the road without having their motives questioned. And then there is the preconceived idea on the machine learning practitioner who would tell you, I don't know why the chicken crossed the road, but look, it did it very well. So there is an idea here that machine learning works very well, but we don't really know why. The link for this very good article by Professor Ingrid Dobachis would be in the description of the video. Let us come back to Facebook tagging and see it as an input-output problem. As I said previously, Facebook doesn't necessarily have all the photos it will be able to tag correctly. It can tag photos it never seen before, based on what it knows. And it doesn't do it the classical computer science way, which is going into a list and seeing which file matches what you are giving it. Instead, the algorithm that recognizes faces and suggests tags in Facebook uses neural networks, which is, as I said before, a way to transform a problem computers are very bad in, like translating sentences or recognizing faces, into a problem in which it does perform, which is doing fast computations. The idea of neural networks is to put neurons, many of them, a deep network of them, consisting of many layers, layer one, layer two, layer three, etc. And for a computer, this image is in fact a grid, a set of pixels. Each pixel is a number. The working principle of this algorithm, which is inspired from the human visual cortex, is that each pixel will send a value to the neurons of the first layer, which in turn will send some value to the neurons of the second layer, etc until the end where we have the value Morgan Freeman. 
An important feature of the neurons is that they give a weight or a coefficient to each other. So each neuron will judge a neuron of the previous layer by its importance. Let's take a closer but still simplified look. Imagine that this neuron is the one that decides if it's a man or a woman. And each time they are receiving all the values from their previous layer, they will give an answer in form of a yes or no. Well, not necessarily 100% yes and 100% no, but it can be like 90% yes and 10% no. Let's take a closer but still simplified look. Imagine that this neuron is the one who decides between man and woman. This is the neuron that will tell if in the photo we have a man or a woman, and then it will send it to the other neurons. So if we have in the previous layer a mustache neuron and a neuron that recognizes eyes, the neuron that decides between men and women will give a very high weight so the synapse that will link them will be very strong because it's important if you have a mustache in a face it's very probable that it's a man while if you distinguish between eyes i guess it's not very helpful to recognize an eye for deciding if in the photo you have a man or a woman so this is how neural network works now there are two questions why they work so why neural network are very good in such tasks and what's the importance of depth but you can have an intuition from this example of man, woman, eyes, mustache, is that the more you have layers, the higher hierarchy you can build in your classification problem. And there is a misconception you can hear sometimes that says that we know nothing about the theoretical foundations of neural networks. It's true that many things are not understood today, but there are some works that answered the first question of why neural networks are good and why depth is important, and I will point you to two works. The first one answers the questions of why neural networks work at the first place. And to this, I'll point you to the universal approximation theorem proved by Saibenko, Hornick, and others. And by the way, Hornick is the one of the developers of the R programming language that says that given any function, in the case of Hornick's paper, it's Borel measurable functions, but you can just say any reasonable function you have in the in real life, like recognizing photos, there exists a neural network that approximates it with, of course, an accuracy you can fix in the beginning. And on a question on why depth is important, so why, why deep learning is performance, there are several papers, one not necessarily, the, the historic ones were not necessarily on the kind of neural networks I explained here in the photo tagging algorithm, but you have a work from Johan Hastad and Michael Goldman that proved that there are some functions for which if you have a threshold circuit with n neurons, so n units, in this case, not neurons, and l layers. If you want to reduce the number of layers by one, n neurons would not be enough and you will need exponentially higher neurons. Which gives you an intuition why depth helps computing functions with less neurons. Links to the papers are given in the description. Of course, this is not a full course on neural networks, but if you want to understand the full picture, you have also to know how learning is performed. In the beginning, we said that Facebook would be able to tag a photo it did not see before of Morgan Freeman based on some photos it have seen. What the learning algorithm of a neural network is about and setting weights, so those coefficients, so the synaptic weights between neurons is the important thing to understand, to have an idea of how learning works for neural networks. But the goal of this video was not to talk about learning, the goal was just to say why neural network work at the first place. This is something you can understand from the universal approximation theorem and why depth is important. So for this, I suggest you get an intuition from Hastad and Goldman paper.